Whether you're applying for a job and you've been asked to send a covering letter along with your CV, or you're writing to an employer to inquire about future opportunities, a strong covering letter is essential to stand out from the competition. However, many applicants are unclear about its purpose and often underestimate its importance. If you've already written a CV or completed an application, then it's easy to assume that the employer has all the information they need. So what should you include? And how do you ensure you make the most of this opportunity to shine? Hi, I'm a careers consultant at the university's careers service. And over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to answer these questions and take you through how to write an effective covering letter, regardless of what you're applying for. So what is the purpose of a covering letter? It's intended to work in partnership with your CV and persuade the reader to select you for the next stage of the application process. Specifically, it must explain why you're interested in them as opposed to anyone else. Highlight aspects of your CV which are particularly relevant to them and create a positive and professional first impression to encourage a busy recruiter to invest more time in reading your application. To do this effectively, it should have three things. A clear structure so it's easy to read quickly and nothing important gets missed. Tailored content that clearly explains why you're a good match for Job X or Organisation Y employers will quickly spot if you're using a standard letter and an appropriate tone and style that shows you understand the expectations of your audience. We'll look at each of these in more detail next. Importantly though, it should also be no more than one side of A4, although there are differences in some sectors such as academia, and it needs to be addressed to a name contact wherever possible. If you don't have a contact name, then it's worth approaching the organisation to ask who is responsible for recruitment or try asking for a key contact in the department or section that you wish to work in. To begin, you need to introduce yourself and explain why you're writing. If you're applying for a job, make it clear which position you're applying for and mention how you heard about it. This helps with the company's marketing. If you're making a speculative inquiry, perhaps about work experience or future opportunities, make sure your request is specific and reasonable and explain what prompted you to write to them. For example, you might say, I'm writing to ask if it would be possible to spend a week shadowing one of your solicitors next month to learn more about a career in family law. I attended a webinar that you delivered earlier this year on the future of the legal profession and was interested to hear how your firm is responding. The first sentence shows you've got a clear goal and the second shows that you've already taken some steps to learn more about the profession and this organisation. Most employers will expect the layout of your letter to follow standard conventions. This is a good example of the start of a professionally laid out covering letter. The address's date and name are in the right places and the paragraphs are neatly formatted. The letter is addressed to Ms Foley, the named contact provided in the job advert. If you're writing in response to a job advert, then reference the position as it's described in the advertisement. Notice in this example, the writer, as well as explaining why they're writing, also briefly explains their current position and summarises their background at the start. This helps the reader to understand where they're coming from and sets the scene for what's to come next. Moving on to the main body of your letter, this is where you need to go beyond your CV and tell them why they should be interested in you and why you were interested in them. Employers want to know three things. Can you do the job? So have you got the skills and the attributes and qualifications they need? Is it really what you want to do? So have you got evidence to show that you understand them and the work? And linked to that, they're also looking to see if you're likely to fit in with them as an organisation. So do you share their values? Or are you likely to get along with their team and suit their way of working? You need to briefly describe your evidence of all three, summarising key experiences from your CV, which demonstrate that you can and want to work with them, including notable achievements where relevant. Alongside this, you need to convey your enthusiasm and therefore motivation to do the work well and explain what you can do for the organisation rather than what they can do for you. This means giving specific examples of where you could contribute. To do this well, you need to do some research and get a clear sense of what the recruiter is looking for. Typically, the most important requirements for the position will be listed in the job advert. To illustrate this, look at this example of a real advert for an editorial writer. Although the role may not interest you, you can see from the text highlighted in red how you can use the advert to spot the qualities, the interests and the skills that are needed to do the job. The advert is a good starting point 
However, it's important to scan all the information provided and do your own background research for a reliable picture of the key priorities. Many organisations will provide further details of the job and a list of person skills like the one shown here. If you're making a speculative inquiry and you don't have an advert to work from, you still need to be as specific as possible and tailor the content carefully. Check the company website for information on the type of work that they offer and what they look for. You might find it helpful to look at relevant job profiles on the Career Service website for further details of what the work involves. And you could also try searching for them on LinkedIn and check for recent news stories. Once you've done your research, you're then ready to explain how you can deliver on these key priorities. A common mistake made by many job seekers in their cover letter is to repeat what's on their CV and stop short of making a clear connection with the specific requirements of the job. It isn't enough to just list what you've done and expect the reader to try and work out the value for themselves. Instead, you need to expand on your points to give a fuller picture of their relevance. In other words, you need to write persuasively. The following sentences from an application for the editorial position we've just considered illustrate how to do this. At the start, the writer shows their commitment and interest in the work by highlighting their long-standing and regular contribution to the lifestyle section of a student newspaper. They also mentioned published articles on subjects that are likely to interest the reader and they include feedback on their accomplishments, including the specific skills listed in the job advert. In the next paragraph, they draw attention to their academic, their work and their extracurricular commitments, describing what motivates them and also providing clear evidence of their organisational skills. They finish with a short description of relevant work experience and the skills this has developed. Each sentence clearly links their experiences and attributes to the key requirements of the post. You also need to explain why you're interested in them as an organisation. It's important to show that you've done your research and you know something about what they do and what they value. You'll find reliable resources to help with this on the Career Service website. Take care to avoid generic statements like I want to work for you because you're a leading company with an excellent reputation. They already know this. You need to unpick what you actually mean and link this to your own aspirations, interests or skills. In this example, the writer shares relevant information about living in Newcastle and opinions that show an enthusiasm and a knowledge of the organisation and the product in terms of its quality and its content. Depending on what you're applying for and your own position, there are many reasons that you might offer. For example, you might have developed an interest in their services or products through work experience or studies or extracurricular activity. Perhaps you've been involved in extracurricular activities that show shared values, or maybe you have international experience and language skills that might be valued, especially if they're operating in a global market. These are just a few examples to help illustrate this point. Always try to highlight knowledge or experience you can bring to the role that's likely to be valued by the organisation. The main body of an effective covering letter is shown in full here. This was written for the editorial position we've just considered. There's a lot to read and we're not going to study it all now. However, you might find it helpful to pause the presentation for a few minutes and read it through in your own time to get a good sense of the overall impact of each of the elements that we've considered so far. Remember the aim of your letter is to persuade the reader to select you for the next stage of the application process. When you're describing relevant experience, where possible, mention positive feedback and individual endorsements. So for example, within three months of joining the team, I was asked to deputise for the team leader while she was on holiday. This shows that others have got confidence in your abilities. Where appropriate, also include some numbers to convey the quality and the scale of your achievements. So these could be outcomes from your course assessments, work or other activities. If you don't meet all the job requirements or you've got limited relevant experience, don't be tempted to use sentences that start, although I don't have exactly the experience that you're looking for. Instead of drawing attention to your weaknesses, emphasise your strengths and transferable learning. So, for example, a history student applying for a graduate role in sales and marketing might say, my education in humanities, combined with my experience in retail sales, makes me uniquely placed to understand how to communicate in a competitive market. 
using a sentence that highlights why your unexpected experience is actually an asset will help to address any concerns that the recruiter may have. Lastly, when you're writing your letter, keep in mind you'll be reading it and match your style to their expectations. The general advice is to use a warm conversational tone unless you're applying to more traditional fields such as law and finance, where a more formal sounding letter might be expected. Always be guided by the tone of the advert and what the organisation says about itself. It's a good idea to check their website and social media channels to get a sense of their voice and culture. Where appropriate, use words and phrases that are familiar to your audience. These are likely to appear more than once in the job advert and in any marketing. Finally, check the normal conventions for the sector and the country if you're applying outside the UK. Most sectors are likely to require a standard conservative style. However, other formats might be more effective if you're applying for opportunities where creativity is likely to be more highly valued. Remember to be always guided by what you know about the company. Your closing paragraph needs to end the letter with a positive summary of your key selling points. Reinforce your interest in the position and remind the reader how you'll be an asset. It's also a good place to address any potential concerns such as visa requirements, career gaps or location. So for example, if you are currently living in Newcastle, but you're applying for a job in Leeds and you've got plans to move there soon, a sentence such as I'm relocating to Leeds in October and look forward to working in the city shows your reader that you've fully read the job description and that the location won't be an issue. Lastly, remember to sign off with yours sincerely when you're writing to a specific person or yours faithfully if you have no named contact. Before sending your letter, make sure you proofread the content and check your spelling and grammar. Always follow any instructions from the employer. And if you're sending your letter by email with your CV, forward these as two separate attachments, including your name in the file name, along with the job reference when applicable. Alternatively, you can send them as a PDF. If you are sending your letter electronically, then include a brief summary in your email, or it may be appropriate for the content to be in the main body of the message. That's the end of this presentation. If you would like further help, you can access expert advice on our website and receive individual feedback on a draft copy of your covering letter. Just go to my career at the link shown. It's one quick step to submit a query and we'll reply within three working days. Thank you for listening and good luck with your applications.